Hi, this is GE Math 1, Module 2.1 Lecture, and uh, it is entitled Mathematical Language and Symbols. I'd like to share with you this PowerPoint presentation so we can start our lecture for this day. <clears throat> Mathematical, math in the Modern World, Mathematical Language and Symbols. Module 2, or Mathematical Language and Symbols, has this core idea that, like any language, mathematics has its own symbols, syntax, and rules. In this chapter, we will talk about characteristics of mathematical language, expression versus sentences, uh, conventions in mathematical language, the four basic concepts, set, function, relation, binary operation, and elementary logic connective, connectives, quantifiers, negations, and variables. So language is a systematic means of communicating by the use of sound or conventional symbols. The code humans use as a form of expressing themselves and communicating with others. Language is a system of words used in a particular discipline. Language is important. We should be able to master language in order for us to convey ideas, concepts, and principles. So the components are, of language are this. It must contain a vocabulary of symbols or words, a grammar consisting of rules on the use of these symbols, a community of people who use and understand these symbols, and a range of meaning that can be communicated with these symbols. Since all of these aforementioned components are also found in mathematics, thus it is only uh, sufficient enough to qualify math or mathematics as a language. The mathematical language. Mathematics is a language in itself. Hence, it is useful in communicating important ideas. Mathematics is a language, or rather as a language, is clear and objective. And language conventions are necessary in mathematics for it to be understood by all. Means the development of a universal language. So math is used in written and in vocal or in written and conversative structure. It is also being used to communicate ideas with precision and it also has a set of its universal language. Hence mathematics is a concrete language in itself. People sometimes have trouble understanding mathematical ideas. It is not necessarily because the ideas are difficult, but because they are being presented in a foreign language. Thus, learning math actually is learning the language of mathematics. So let us take a look what, is the, what are the characteristics of mathematical language. Unlike in the normal grammar or normal languages, math has no past, present, and future tenses. It is devoid of emotional content. However, it is precise, concise, and powerful. It makes math such a viable language because of these characteristics. Math language is precise. It has the absence of ambiguity, able to make very fine distinction. For example, in the English language, we could say the sun is very far from the earth. But mathematically speaking, we can say that the sun is 93 million kilometers from the earth. It is precise. Also, it is concise. If we are able to say words briefly, then we could communicate in a much efficient way. For example, in the English language, the sum of three and four is seven, we could write it in just five symbols. The symbol for three, the symbol for addition, the symbol for four, the symbol for equality, and the symbol for seven. Three plus four is seven. Also, math express complex thought with relative ease. For example, you could say, you are a diligent student, therefore you will pass in GE Math 1. In English, if you are a diligent, diligent student, then you will pass in GE Math 1. In math, we could just say P then Q. So it is able to express complex thoughts with just relative ease. 
So notions in mathematical language, we have synonyms, the importance of truth, conventions and syntax, definition and undefined terms, and simplicity and elegance. These are the notions of the mathematical language. So when it comes to conventions in mathematical language, like other languages, mathematics has nouns, pronouns, verbs, and sentences. It has its own vocabulary, grammar, syntax, synonyms, negations, sentence structure, paragraph structure, conventions, and abbreviations. It is designed such a way that one can write about numbers, sets, functions, etc., as well as to process undergone by these elements, like adding, multiplying, grouping, evaluating, negating, and, any more, uh, and many more. So nouns could be constants, such as a number or expressions with number, like four or two with the parenthesis four minus one third, the quantity, four minus one over three, or negative 15. That could be, that's our noun. A verb could be the equal sign or the inequality symbol, like greater than or greater than or equal. Pronouns could be like variables, x or y. 5x minus 8, 2xy, minus 4x. So sentences could be formed by putting these together. A noun, 3, plus a pronoun, x, plus the verb, plus, then another noun, 7, a verb, equal, and noun, 24. It could be read 3x plus 7 is equal to 4. Makes sense. 2x plus 3 is equal to 7. Mathematics use many symbols. 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, to 9. Symbols for operations, plus, minus, multiplication, division. Symbol that represents value, x, y, to infinity. And many special symbols, like equality, less than sign, greater than sign, greater than or equal sign, the pi, etc., etc., and etc. So vocabulary versus sentences. Every language has its own vocabulary. The words and its rules for combining these words into complete thoughts and sentences. So mathematics is no exemption. As a first step in studying mathematical language, we will make a very broad classification between the nouns of mathematics used to name mathematical objects of interest and the sentences of mathematics which state complete mathematical thought. So let's have a comparison. English noun versus sentences. So nouns are used to name things we want to talk about, like people, places, and things, while sentences are used to say complete thoughts. For example, consider the sentence, Carol loves mathematics. Carol is the noun, right? And Carol loves mathematics is the sentence. Although mathematics and uh, uh, rather, mathem Carol and mathematics actually are the nouns, and love is a verb. So, here in the sentence, we have two nouns and one verb. This is how English constructs its sentences. In math, we could say that it's no longer nouns and sentences, but expressions and sentences. An expression is the mathematical analog of an English noun. Thus, it is a name given to a mathematical object of interest. It is the correct arrangement of mathematical symbols used to represent a mathematical object of interest. And a mathematical sentence, on the other hand, is the analog of an English sentence. It is a correct arrangement of mathematical symbols that states a complete thought. For instance, <clears throat> in English, Noun is person, place, and things. In math, it's expression, numbers, sets, and functions. Examples for English are Carol, Iluino, and book. In math, it's five, two plus three, one half, three, function of x. So sentence, on the other hand, is a complete thought. Example, the capital of the Philippines is Manila. In math, we could say that a complete sentence is three plus four is seven. 
there's also a false or rather a sentence which is untrue. Like when we say the capital of the Philippines is Iloilo City. That is a complete thought, a sentence, but it is false. It is untrue. Just like 3 plus 4 is 8. That is a sentence. It has a complete thought, but it's not true. So expressions does not state a complete thought. It does not make sense to ask if an expression is true or false. The most common expression types are number sets, number sets, and functions. Number have a lot of different names. For example, 5, 2 plus 3 is still 5. 10 over 2 is still 5. The quantity 6 minus 2 plus 1 is still 5. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is still 5. These different names actually is just referring to the same number. The simple idea that the numbers have a lot of different names is extremely important in math. Okay? Let's make that clear. However, sentences have verbs. In mathematical sentences, we could say that 3 plus 4 is 7. Or we could say that 3 plus 4 is 8. And since it has a verb, the equality sign, then we could now measure whether the statement is true or false because it is already expressing a complete thought. Is the thought being expressed true or false? The sentence 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 is true. It is a sentence, it has a complete thought, and it is true. The sentence 1 plus 4, or 1 plus 2 is 4, or equal to 4, is false. It is a sentence, it has a complete thought, but it's false. The sentence x equal to 2 is sometimes true and sometimes false. It is true when x is actually 2 and false otherwise. The sentence x plus 3 is equal to 3 plus x is always true, no matter what. No matter what value we choose for x, this sentence is always true. So as we see, English versus mathematics. English has nouns and sentences. Nouns could be a person, place, or things. Sentences could either be true or false, sometimes true or sometimes false as well. In mathematics, there are expressions, and these expressions could be number, set, function, matrix, or ordered pairs. And there is, uh, they have also sentences, which is a complete thought, and we could evaluate as true, false, or sometimes true, or sometimes false. Examples are this, 2 is an expression, 1 plus 1 is an expression, x plus 1 is an expression, but 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 is a sentence, and it is true. 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 is a sentence, but it is false x plus 1 is equal to 3 is sometimes true and sometimes false. It is true if x is equal to 2 and it's false otherwise. Identify the verbs in the following sentences. <clears throat> Let's do away with English. Let's just try C and D. So 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. Then we could say that the equal sign is the verb in mathematical language. Right? Let's try evaluating whether it's true or false. 3 plus 4 is 7. That's true. 3 plus 4 is greater than 8. It's false. But both C and D have complete thought. Remember that. They are sentences. So these are exercises that we could do on our own in order for us to practice and learn more with uh, this topic. So now let's proceed to how to read mathematical expressions or sentences. In number one, that's five minus three is equal, three is equal to two. In number two, that's an expression. 
it's the quantity x plus 3 squared. Or we could say that it is a square of the sum of x plus 3. Alright? Number 3, the function of x is equal to negative 3. And number 4, the domain of x, the domain is x an element of r. So the domain of x consists of all real numbers. Alright? Reading and interpreting mathematical expressions. So for example, this is percent. It means a quantity of 100. So 32% actually is 32 over 100. f of x, or the function of x, is finding the range when x is given or finding the value of the function of x. Variables. A variable is sometimes thought of as a mathematical John Doe. We don't know what it is. We need to find what it is. Because you can use it as a placeholder when you want to talk about something, but you imagine that it has one or more values, but you don't know what they are. Or you want whether you say about it to be equally true for all elements in a given set. When it comes to using variables, the start of the alphabet is usually used for constants, fixed values. The value i to n actually are positive integers, counting. And the end of the alphabet, x, y, z, are for variable, variables. However, these are not true all the time. But just like language, most of the time these are used to refer to specific things. In the equation y is equal to ax plus b, this is a universal term. And y is a variable, a is a constant, x is a variable, b is a constant. It is always assumed that A and B are constant because of the set rule, these uh, principles that we have mentioned about. Okay? So, for example, is there a number with the following property? Doubling it and adding 3 gives the same result as squaring it. So, let me share with you a whiteboard so we could solve this further. The question is, is there a number? Since we do not know what number it is, let's make it x. Such that doubling it, multiply that with 2, and adding 3 gives the same result as squaring it. That's how we write this statement into mathematical language. Again, is there a number? We don't know what it is, so we make it x. In which doubling it, we multiply that with 2. And adding 3 would be equal to squaring it. See? That is how we create or we write uh, English statements into mathematical language. Let's try example two. Use variables to rewrite the following sentence more formally. Are there numbers with property? The sum of their squares are equal the square of their sum. So are there numbers? AB with the property that A squared plus B squared is equal to the quantity A plus B squared. Let me do that once again with a whiteboard. Question. Is there a number? The question is, is there a number? We don't know what number that is. So let me use A because the example uses A. Is there A? A numbers? We need two numbers. Are there numbers with the property that the sum of their squares? The sum of their squares. Meaning the square of the first term plus the square of the second term is equal to 
the squares of their sum. So the squares of their sum. So guys, it's a simple understanding of transforming English languages into mathematical expression. So for example, example B, given any real number, its square is non-negative. So for any number R, that's a real number, R squared is greater than or equal to zero. There's actually another way of telling this, of writing this, but we'll reserve that later on when we uh, tackle sets. So we have exercises for you as well. You could just screen grab this or it's in your notes and you could try to practice on this. And if you have questions, you could clarify that when we meet once again on next week. So that's it. This is once again module 2.1 about mathematical.